to to uh, charge up. So this just regulates. I guess it's your only real regulation. It just soft charges it, charges it and uh, and brings the level up in the DC bus off these big caps. So you don't blow input fuses or trip breakers, things like this, and you don't smoke your front end, your your diodes and whatnot. So this is just more or less just there to current limit the amount of power that the the caps are going to suck when they originally power uh, apply power to it. Uh, the other thing is this little resistor right here. This one. I'll expose it a little bit more. That. A lot of people say is your your precharge resistor. It's not. This is in parallel with the contactor, but its job is to bleed down the 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 DC bus when you take power off. Code in the United States anyway, 90 seconds to be non-lethal so that you don't get killed if you accidentally brush up against something. So the idea is is that um, go ahead, power it down. The contactor closes or opens up, I guess you could say, it closes to this circuit down here and that power resistor bleeds this bus off within 90 seconds to make it non-lethal anyway. You can still get burned, you can still get hurt, so be very careful. This is serious power on these little guys. This is a small drive too, I think this thing's only 50 horsepower, but that will definitely kill you. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. These are these are not to be messed with, so make sure that you don't have any power there. Just can't seem to get to that bus. Keep on finding more things I want to show you. Um, this is our input for tech board. Here's the back side. Here's the MOVs, yeah, and the uh, high frequency caps and whatnot. The bridge then just gets hooked directly up to it through this through the studs, and uh, so it just does its thing from there. Um, the other thing too is that this connector right here, this is for your relay outputs, the programmable relays, they isolate, or the idea is, is that they put this down by the power because of, again, a code issue in the United States. You got to make sure that you don't uh, intermingle your high voltage with low voltage and this could be either or, it depends on the customer's needs, but uh, they put them down here because that's where your main power comes into the thing and then that's how they get by the code issue. All right, now I think I'm finally going to take this bus out. Okay, same square D drive. Got the cooling fan, your uh, ground fault circuitry, precharge or cut in, your input. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out to you are these little resistors up here. Kind of hard to do. They're across each cap. Um, a lot of people confuse these. Uh, it used to be this was your only bleed down, so they used to be called uh, bleed resistors. Nowadays, with that addition, with that other resistor way down here in the corner, uh, at least with Square D's design um, and other people's designs, they don't rely on this so much to bleed it down. The technical reason these are on there is to balance the bus. So these are technically called balance resistors, and the the only idea is is that they're going to be um, creating a circuit and they're going to be wiring it. You get your plus going in your minus, out your plus, and your minus, out your plus, and so on. Um, they're stacking these up in a series parallel pattern most of the time. Sometimes it's just a series. Uh, ABB likes to put three in a row a lot of the times. Um, everybody's a little bit different, but generically speaking, they will put two in series and two in parallel, or, or at least two in series to get uh, on a 480 volt drive. The reason is, is because in America you're dealing with 480 volts or 460, um, your bus potential is going to be 1.414 times your incoming voltage or roughly 650, maybe 700 volts DC. This is a, a 400 volt cap. So we have exceeded the voltage rating of the cap. If you were just to wire these directly to the bus, right across the whole thing, the cap would vent um, or blow up. So what they do is they run them in series with one another. So you'll have the main and its sister right here and these two will work as a set these two up here will work as a set I guess I, I didn't really study the bus um, it, it could be wired differently but just for practical purposes just to point it out they'll they'll run the uh, the plus in here out minus into your plus out your minus that's one set um, plus into out your minus into your plus out your minus 
So you got ultimately you would have plus to minus on this one back here. And then that's your bus. So these would be in parallel with these two up here. And then this one is in series with that one. So anyways, I just wanted to point that out that these little guys right here aren't technically bleed resistors, they're balance resistors. Uh, I guess the idea is, is that you put a resistor across the cap, equal resistance across the cap, the voltage then gets split, and then you know you'll have 300 some about 320, 330 volts here, 330 volts there. We're underneath the 400 volt rating, 450 volt surge most likely, and um, the cap works fine, does its job. Anyway, just thought I'd point that out real quick. And well, actually, as long as I'm ready. Ta da! <laughs> Finally, that's it. Not much to it. You get three IGBTs. Uh, these are duals. These are also obsolete, most likely. Uh, this is a, a dual. This is used for your brake. You get your three phase in, your bus here, your plus bus up here, your minus bus down here, and then you get your your uh, L1, L2, L3. The uh, the motor gets connected up here, so you get U, V, and W, and you get your plus bus that goes along these studs, and your minus that go along these studs right here, and same thing with this brake, so you get minus plus, and then you're out for your brake, and a lot of the times they won't even use that, they'll just use one of the transistors, um, and they usually break the, the plus bus, and then this one's just dead-ended, it's really not even being used. Um, this one, in fact, down here was gate lead was jumped so that's the case on this one but anyway uh, and then you get your caps nothing to it a little cooling fan right there and underneath here most likely inside the drive behind this cooling fan I pulled that cover off so you could see it there's most likely some sort of a reactor in there whether it's a um, a DC choke uh, a three-phase reactor whatever um, I don't think it's a three-phase um, in fact, I don't even think they even have a reactor. This thing's just so dang heavy, I just assumed there'd be something in there. It's deceivingly heavy. It weighs, I bet you, when it was all put together, probably 75, 80 pounds. So I just was figuring there's probably so much space underneath here that there's got to be something buried, but I don't know. It might be just one big block of aluminum, and uh, I don't know where the weight is coming from then. But anyway, I'll take it apart. We'll take a look underneath there. Um, this, by the way, is just some shielding they put that in there so that it when it does explode or if it does vent it traps it so you don't get hurt or you know the rest of the drive doesn't get the barrack flash and whatnot so anyway I will uh, pop those off and try and get uh, underneath that bus there or underneath that heat sink and see if we can uh, find oh by the way here's your little temperature sensor on the newer IGBTs a lot of the times they'll they'll have a, a spot on the pins this is just your gate and emitter on these older ones but on the new ones, you probably will have a, a spot down there where you can actually monitor the plate temperature inside of that directly. They'll have a little thermal couple in there, whatever it is, NTC, usually an, an NTC, and then they'll run it out through a pinout up to your logic board, and then your logic board can read each individual plate or IGBT. And then a lot of the times, too, they'll, they'll combine all these together and uh, make it just one big package. I don't like it when they do that because if this one were to burn out, you got to replace these two right here. These are perfectly good, um, and it's usually a very, very expensive power plate or uh, six pack. Anyway, I will uh, take that apart. And we'll see what's underneath there. All right. Okay, I guess I was wrong. Actually, kind of pleasantly surprised. That's just one big heavy heat sink. And nothing else in there. I'm really surprised that they would have that big of a heat sink for this small of a drive. Especially with that much air going across it. I know that the, that's the way they used to build them quite a bit. This drive here was probably made in, I'll say, the late 90s. But, uh, yeah, well, anyways, great. That is heavy. I, I bet you that weighs, oh, man, I bet you that weighs a good 20 pounds. It doesn't look like it's that heavy, but it really is. Anyway. Yeah. Okay.